The Gospel reading for the second Sunday in Lent this year comes from the Gospel according to St Luke, chapter 13, beginning at verse 31. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I'm casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow and the next day, I must be on my way, but it's impossible, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Here ends the reading. In my kitchen at home, I have a small painting, an oil painting, of chooks in the backyard. They're mixed variety chickens. Some are all white, a few black ones, and a few spotted ones. And of course, there's a very smart looking rooster who clearly thinks he's in charge. It was painted by a parishioner from Horsham and captures the wonderfully social nature of backyard chooks. They scratch away all day, love to search out insects and squabble with each other just like we do. Most of us have memories of watching as little chickens emerge from eggs. And perhaps you can remember too when you first realised that a delicious roast chicken dinner came at a very considerable cost to the chicken. In today's gospel, Jesus juxtaposes the familiar image of a hen gathering her chicks together at the end of the day with the rapacious image of Herod searching for Jesus and the Pharisees always on the lookout for themselves and their own advantage, having completely forgotten the role of the law in ruling their hearts and minds and lived out in their communal life. In the face of Herod's collaboration with the Romans and the religious leadership of the Jewish people having compromised their integrity at almost every level, Jesus' words are full of lament and warning. And at the centre of this passage, that lovely familiar image of a hen gathering her chicks. Jesus is lamenting what has happened to the people of the covenant. In today's Old Testament reading, we heard how Abraham and his descendants entered into a solemn covenant with God, where God promises to make Abraham's descendants as numerous as the stars in the night sky. In successive interactions with this covenanted people, God repeats his faithful promises to build from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob a great nation that will bless the whole world through its faithfulness to the God of the covenant. But as Jesus looks at the fractured, compromised people who are these sorry descendants of Abraham, he sees not a people dedicated to the world, but a sycophantic Jewish puppet king and the conservative religious elite who love the law in its many iterations so much they have no room left to love God or God's people. And so Jesus laments that Jerusalem, which once symbolised the primacy of God's chosen people, the covenanted ones, has become an empty house. Jesus uses the imagery of a hen gathering her chicks about himself. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood, he says. But then Jesus says, you were not willing. Jesus promises that he'll go on teaching and healing and traveling around for today and tomorrow. But on the third day, he'll finish his work. We can only understand this as a reference to his passion and death and resurrection. 
the old covenant, the old kingship, the old city where God chose to dwell, have all failed. You were not willing. And so God's covenant people did not receive the benefits and responsibilities of the old covenant. Even though God had always been faithful to his promises, the people of God have not been faithful. So the image of the hen gathering her brood is doubly painful. Jesus' desire is clear. He wants the people of God to recover their identity, yet they will not do it. Jesus desires to gather into one again the covenants of the people of God, but they reject him in this passage, just as they rejected him physically and spiritually when they sent him to the cross. For those of us travelling towards Easter during this Lenten season, this gospel reminds us that the covenant of Easter is a new and living way for us to be restored to a loving relationship with God. No longer does God's covenant depend on mutuality. The covenant established by cross and resurrection is always a covenant of new beginnings, of forgiveness and of hope, because it is not determined by us. The new covenant is a place where the initiative is always God's. So we can hear the words of Jesus in today's gospel see your house is left to you as a devastating statement about the failure of the old covenant of the old chosen people of god to fulfill their part in the relationship that god established with abraham but we can also hear the resonances resonances of this new and living way a new covenant where god is always the primary actor are we then still free, free to choose God, free to walk away, free to reject God's new covenant? The answer is always yes, but such turning away is always balanced and accompanied by God's desire that we should be gathered under God's wings like a brood of chickens huddling beneath the hen's feathers. May our Lenten fast then, be a fast from self-satisfaction, from trusting in our own moral righteousness, from trusting in a generosity that is often self-congratulating, in fasting from a religious superiority that really comes from a deep distrust of God and of ourselves. It's only when we fast from these self-preoccupations that we can begin to savour the true satisfaction of casting all our hope and desire towards God and finding in God all our deepest hungers truly satisfied. Let us pray. God of our ancestors, whose chosen servant Abraham was given faith to obey your call and go out into the unknown, endow your church with such faith that we may follow you with courage for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you safe today and always. Amen.